Hey everybody, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great uh, start to your week. I know some people are off in the U.S. because of President's Day. Just another empty holiday uh, constructed for other purposes than celebration given to the American people. But hey, who, who am I to talk about that? Um, look. Here's what I do want to talk about. In my line of work, and do forgive me, I am working from home today, uh, not so much because of the holiday, but because uh, everybody's at home and I want to kind of be in that environment. Uh, you know, so uh, it's going to be an in and out type of day. Uh, I know Marion has a couple of things she's going to do, but she's also doing it from home, so she's not going into her office. And so, um, I am having to run to my office to grab something that I need. And so in the time, I thought I would take this opportunity to talk to you guys. Look, in my line of work, I come across some common themes. You know, everybody has an individual, unique life, but there are some common things. Fear, failure, not sure what to do disrupted or compromised self-concept or self-image, which uh, negatively impacts your self-esteem and your self-confidence uh, and everything else that comes out of that. Um, negative circles, being around a bunch of people who are professional naysayers, uh, being guilty and held down by your past, um, Maybe you made a bad mistake. Maybe you did something you're not proud of and you're carrying it. Uh, before I move on, I want to say something. Uh, one of the worst things you can do in this life is attempt to mortgage your future uh, or to mortgage your future in an attempt to pay for your past. What does that mean? That means constantly self-sabotaging giving up opportunities playing yourself small and a bunch of other things because you're still tr feeling guilty about something you did in the past now I do believe that it is your responsibility if you've done something if you wrong someone if you've done something to harm someone to do everything in your power to make amends. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes people aren't willing to forgive. Sometimes the damage is so great that there's no connectivity. You're gonna to have to accept that and what you have to do is understand you cannot allow that bad mistake, as bad as it may be and as much as you may have to make amends, it may not make a, you may not make amends with that person. You might have to create a life that counters it. In other words, you did something that was not good but over the course of your life, <laughs> you became someone different. You became someone powerful. You became someone forceful. And you, you help people heal. You help people change. That is how you're going to do it. You can't throw away your future in, in an attempt to pay for your past, an attempt to get rid of that guilt. You've got to first of all, heal from the things that made you do what it is that you did. And if it was a mistake of all, I mean, you make people make bad choices, people make bad decisions. If it wasn't an intentional thing, you definitely got to let it go. But if it was intentional, you got to find out what made you, where, what put you where you were at the time. You did that. And you got to get past it. You absolutely have to get past it. But let me tell you something. No matter what the thing poor concept, poor, poor uh, self-concept, poor self-image, uh, fear of failure, procrastination, what it, is. it boils down to one thing. You're not taking action. You haven't made up in your mind that you are going to do what is necessary for you to have what it is you say you want to have. It's, it's, it's really that simple. We can come up with a whole bunch of excuses as to why we don't have the things that we say we want. And at the end of the day, it's because we haven't made the necessary commitment to go after it. Saying you want it and taking a couple of steps isn't a commitment. 
it's a filler. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see how hard it is. I'm gonna see, and, and, and see the commitment is different than the filler. The filler is actually to go out there and see just how hard will this be? You know, is this something I can go out there and knock out? You know, and then you, you, you get out there and you feel it and it's like, no, this is, this is, this is a tough one. Man, this might hurt a little. And, and, and so you put it on the shelf, you back off of it. No, see, that's not commitment. Commitment makes a commitment before you ever know how hard it's gonna be, knowing that it's gonna be hard. And that is the difference. See, providence, people love to talk about providence. People love to talk about, uh, you know, the faith part of this thing and how God moves or how the universe moves or how life moves, depending on where your faith is placed. But here's the thing. Providence is this thing that has to be activated. Providence doesn't present itself before it's activated. Guess how you activate providence? You got to take the first step. Absolutely got to take the first step. That's what faith is. That's what activates providence. There are so many things you can't see that you know you need that you won't move because you can't see it, but you're going to have to move before you can see it. See, faith is the substance of things that you hope for and the evidence of the things that you're unable to see. So uh, faith tells you that you can't see it, but it's there. Well, see, you're going to have to act on that faith because when you act on the faith, your faith is rewarded by the gateway of providence open. Uh, William Hutchinson Murphy uh, said it. He said, not until commitment is made and you move away from all of the non-committal behavior. And I'm paraphrasing. You move away from all the non-committal behavior. When you move away from it and you actually take the first step and move towards something and you commit to it, then and only then is the gateway of providence open. And it's after that that all types of fortuitous realities start to present themselves. Things that you thought unimaginable and impossible start to present themselves things you thought, man, this will never happen. When when you move towards the thing that you say you want with an intention and a commitment to finish what you start, things happen. Am I telling you that it's going to be easy? No, I'm telling you it's work. I'm telling you it's labor. It's commitment. It, 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 it's patience. It's a bunch of different things. But what it's not is sitting up, filling out something to see how hard it is and then moving on to the next easy thing, thinking you're going to get something worthwhile that's going to fill that void on the inside that's telling you there's something more to life. No, you are going to have to wake up. You're going to have to go out there and get it. You're going to have to go out there and fight for it. You're going to have to go out there and sometimes bleed and crawl for it. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're looking for ease, you're never going to have true reward in life. You're going to, you may have, you may even have comfort. You may say, man, I made it through life. My bills got paid. I lived in a fairly decent neighborhood. Every now and then, maybe once a year, we took a trip for vacation. I got my 401k and a little nest egg saved up and, you know, it's been good. And it's, it's and, and, and the problem with that is for a lot of people that sounds okay. Why? Because we've been taught to play it safe. We've been taught not to go out and go after things. We've been taught don't, don't shake the boat, don't rock the boat, do what everybody else does, just get out there. Here's a problem now, though, for the latter generations. That don't even work no more. To go out and get a job, stay with a company for 30 years, build your 401k or your pension and, and, and retire and live. Number one is people are outliving their pensions now. The life expectancy has increased. And so people are outliving their pensions and their nest eggs because and, 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 and they don't have anything to follow on because all they knew was I know how to work, go to work and do a job. Well, see, in most of these jobs, they're going to have forced retirement at a certain age. Why? Because they got to make room for the next generation of the workforce. And that's what it's about for them. That's cycling out employees. It's what businesses do. And, and it's hard to get a job after 50. And it gets increasingly harder every year. And so what are you going to do now? Because you're not marketable, what are you going to do? You didn't build anything. You don't have anything that you own. You don't have anything you control. And see, retirement is a concept that came along in the industrial age. People didn't retire 2,000, 3,000 years ago. People worked until they went home, until they transitioned. 
it was what they did. It was what they were passionate about. It was what they known for. It was their work. It wasn't simply a job. It was work. And, and this isn't taking a shot at people who have jobs. Some people are working in for a job in their passion, but they have their future planned out. They know what they're going to do. They got money put over here. They got full, they, they, they got their 401k invested in a certain way that it's growing rapidly. They're also investing their money in other things. They've got a side hustle. They got a bunch of other things. What I'm saying is you got to see beyond the moment. If you want more than what the average person has, you've got to be willing to do more than the average person is doing. And that's where most people are. They, they're playing it safe. You got to come out of there. William Hutchinson Murray said, not, not, once you take that step, once you commit, oh man, magic happens. He says, magic happens. What he was saying is the supernatural takes place. The gateway of abundance begins to open. The gateway of providence and provision begins to open. Avenues and pathways begin to, begin to present themselves. But it does not start until you make up in your mind to take that step. Now, how many people who are watching this know they need to take that step? How many people are watching this that know they need to take that step? You're taking it easy, you're playing it safe, you won't invest in yourself, you won't go out there and pursue something too afraid of failure. Failure is your best teacher. Ask Edison. Ask anybody actually who has ever been successful. They failed their way to that success. They didn't get it right the first time. They got better each time. They became excellent because they kept going until they mastered it. That's a problem with a bunch of people. You don't want to invest the time to master anything. You From the one thing to the next, one thing to the next, one thing to the next, and you never master anything. You've, you've been a part of a whole bunch of stuff, but you never stood out. You never carved your own space because you never took time to master anything. It's time to take your life to the next level. It's time to stop making excuses. It's time. And then I get people who come to me. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it real this morning. I get people who come to me. Doc, I really want to work with you. I really want to work with you. And, and I said, okay, talk to me. Tell me what it is you want. Tell me what it is you want to do. And I tell them, okay, this is what you want to do. And yes, I can help you get there. And then they say, well, how much is it going to cost me? And I tell them, well, whoa, ooh, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't do that right now, Doc. But I tell you, you know, I believe you're worth it. And... You know, I believe you're worth it. And, and, and someday, you know, one day I'm, I'm going to get it. As soon as I get it, I'm going to get back. Now, I want to be very clear of the person I'm talking about here. That's the people who come to me who literally cannot afford me. That's why I've created a lot of different programs that aren't as expensive to where they can get a lot of what I teach. Uh, with, with obviously not as much access. To have the type of access that my platinum, gold, silver, and bronze uh clients have cost because it's taking my time and my time is valuable because I'm trying to accomplish something uh, but I'm worth every dime because I deliver and see that's how you know when you're not getting somebody I deliver I deliver I deliver enough that I've got clients that come back and you know pay those hefty prices multiple times to keep going because each time they got better so I know I deliver but I want to make sure I'm t uh, pointing out the right person so people understand who I'm talking about. There are people out there who can't afford me. I'm not talking about you. I'll do whatever I can to try to get you some money. That's why I do so much free content for the people who cannot afford to work with me. They can at least get some idea of what's necessary, what's going on, and how it needs to be done, and whatever. I'm talking about the person that will sit up and tell me, that they can't afford me and I look up and they're in Cabo. Now, and then a week after they get back from Cabo, they don't talk about how hard it is and 
and they, they trying to struggle and they trying to get this, but you, you, you can go to Cabo. My whole thing is, I get it. You need to unwind. You need to do some things. You need to be better. I, I, I get that. You, you, you're not, you're not, you're not losing me on that. I get it. I, I, I really do. My, my thing is, I probably just need to go to the front of the office. I'm not gonna park in this garage. Um, my thing is that. Uh, at some point, you got to make a sacrifice. I used to bat, you know, some years back, probably maybe twenty years, ago, almost twenty years ago, and 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 further back. But you know, I used to look up, and I used to have people that I knew, and they were like. Man, we going here, we going there, man. We going, we gonna fly, we going here. You coming? And I had more than all of those guys put together. And I'm looking at my stuff saying, no, this grind time, this ain't spend time. And I'm looking at them and I look at the vast majority of them still ain't got it. They out there balling out of control in Jamaica and Barbados and Belize and can't. Uh, Cancun, Costa Rica, you know, um, the, you know, and, and all of that renting out mansions and everything like that. And I'm looking at them now, and most of them are still in that same space. I'm, 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 I'm building second empire because that's where my focus needs to be. So while I had the money to go X, Y, Z, that money needed to be invested in something I thought was more important. So really you gotta ask yourself, how bad do I want it? How important is it to me? And so, because a lot of times you can, a lot of times you can't afford me, but it's not that high on your priority list. Barbados is, Louis Vuitton is, Gucci is, that new whip, all that stuff is great when you got that kind of money to afford it. No problem if that's what you want to do with it. But when you buying something that you really can't afford, and that has to be literally a formula that tells me tells you whether you can afford it or not, not your emotions. Your emotions will tell you you can afford it, we'll figure it out later. No, that has to be a formula of how much money you have on hand, how much cash you have on hand, how many hard assets, how many liquid assets, where are you at right now, and what that what does that cost? and what type of value it brings to you and do you really need it and you know does it fit the formula if it doesn't fit the formula you don't need it i rarely buy outside of my formula and when it is it's never for me it's things you have to learn but you're going to make up in your mind whether you want to do it or not on that note i've made it here i'm about to jump out and grab what i need and get back to the house. As you can tell, I'm still wrestling with this freaking sinus infection. This is a beast. It's giving me the business. Uh, but I'm doing a lot better than I was doing. And no, for those uh, paranoid people out there, no, I don't have COVID. I get tested regularly because my kids are out doing things and I wanna make sure that they are okay so that everybody gets tested. Uh, but we are all good. Uh, just, uh, wrestling with a sinus infection, which normally happens with me around this time of year for whatever reason. Uh, you know, it may be a trigger of an allergy that started or whatever, but I don't normally have allergies, so it's crazy. But anyway, look, it's time to make a, make a, make a move. The stuff you're looking for to give you a sense of whether you should move or not, you won't get to see until you make the move. If you want something bad enough, you don't ask what it costs. You go out and get it. If you want something bad enough, hey, I want to start my own business. Well, ain't nothing, nothing's going to stop me. You know, that's a goal I have for my family. I didn't, I, 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 I sort of knew that the cost was going to be extremely high, but it wasn't a, 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 a deciding factor. I just knew, man, this, I'm about to put in some years. I'm about to put in some hard work. I'm about to have some setback. I'm going to have some frustrations with some people that are going to be mad at me because I don't have time for them. But this is what I've got to do because I got something I want for my family. I'm challenging you. This is a time to make a move. In the description box, there are gonna be a couple of links of programs I offer for people who are trying to make moves. 
find one and make a move. You're the only one that's gonna have to live with the decision. So it's up to you. I'm gonna wake up every day and I'm gonna take the step. So I'm gonna be good. But I'm challenging you to do the same. On that note, let me get in here. Thank you guys for putting up with me in my horrible voice and uh, time. Take care. And as I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on it. I challenge you to do the same thing. I'm out.